Have you heard phrases like it's easier than ever to get started in IT or that, you know, DevOps is probably one of the most viable career paths inside of IT? Well, my name is Michael Forster and I'm with Cloud, and I want to see if we can make it easier for those who are either new to IT or just starting post computer science graduation or whatever degree that you have. Is there a way to actually make it easier to know what skills to build to actually become a competent and skilled DevOps engineer? And so I'd like to talk to you today about a tool called roadmap.sh and see if we can make this tool more useful for complete beginners to the DevOps space. Before getting into the topic, let me ask you a question. Are you looking to master DevOps and accelerate your career? At CoCloud, we've got you covered. Our platform offers over 120 courses and over 880 hands-on labs that are designed to teach you real-world skills through practical, immersive learning. With guided learning paths, we make complex concepts simple and help you to master essential tools like Kubernetes, Docker, Terraform, CI, CD, and more with ease. So what sets us apart? Our AI integrated labs are probably one of our biggest and significant features. Are you stuck on a task? Well, let our AI assistant guide you step by step by offering real time feedback on what it is seeing in your screen and personalized solutions for the challenges you're running into. Plus, it now supports multiple languages, which is going to break down barriers to education like never before. With CodeCloud, you don't just learn on our platform, you practice, you build projects, and you get to thrive in a community of learners. So start your journey today and make DevOps mastery simple. All right, let's get back to the topic. All right, so here we are. This is roadmap.sh. And what's interesting is that there's a number of role-based roadmaps and skill-based roadmaps around certain skills. And I got to tell you, this is overwhelming for someone who's brand new to the space. And you'll see up here is that originally they just had DevOps roadmaps but now they've expanded to a, a bunch of roadmaps. But when we click on something like DevOps, immediately we're kind of overwhelmed. There's a lot here. And by the way, through some advocacy, there is now a beginner's version, which we're actually gonna talk about. But when you look at something like this and you're brand new to the space, it's interesting some of the choices here, right? For example, the first thing we're gonna do is learn a programming language. That might be really tough for a beginner. Notice here that we have operating systems and we see Windows and Linux, and those are very distinct choices. Notice also the Unix is here, and quite frankly, this whole thing could just go away because no one's really using Unix in production anymore, except for legacy systems for the most part. Don't get me wrong, there's still some large enterprises who probably are buying and still using Unix, but for the most part, people have centered either on a Linux-based ecosystem, a Windows-based ecosystem, or a little bit of both. But we'll also point out that if you're doing Windows, then things like PowerShell probably make a lot of sense. So would things like IIS, which is a different flavor of web server that runs on top of Windows. But frankly, the point of all that is that something like this is just probably a little too overwhelming for a beginner to get started with. But we've got some good things here, right? We've got networking protocols. We've got different pieces like forward proxies and reverse proxies, caching servers, firewalls, and load balancers. We've also got like different pieces that you can do inside of a terminal, like process monitoring, performance monitoring, network tools, and text manipulation. Now, the cool thing about this is that, yes, it's got some substance to it, but there's also a, a lot of options here that the majority of people just absolutely just do not need to touch. So how could we simplify this down so to make it more useful for beginners? Well, first I would say, let's take a look at the simplified plan to see if that might help. So let's visit the beginner version of the roadmap. Now, once again, we start off with a programming language, but let me just go ahead and forewarn you right now. Unless you are doing something with like say Kubernetes operators or you're writing low latency applications, Go is a great language, but it doesn't have the simplicity and robustness that Python does. So this is a little bit misleading because quite frankly, you're probably gonna start by learning Python because it's gonna give you the broadest access and ease when starting a language Whereas Golang, as popular and as engaging as it is, especially has a low latency, high speed service creator, Python just has a lot more broad use. If you absolutely must have performance, and again, you're working on Docker and Kubernetes, this makes sense, but otherwise, Python. Next, they make a good choice here and then they stick with a system. One thing to know about DevOps is DevOps is all about patterns. Do you understand patterns of automation? 
Do you understand operating system patterns? Do you understand CICD patterns? And most of the things that we learn inside of DevOps are related to another thing. For example, networking and protocols is actually related to an operating system for the most part, at least unless you're not a network engineer. So in this case, networking and protocols would actually relate to, you're gonna learn about networking and protocols as it relates to Linux, actually. And if this said Windows over here, then you would learn networking protocols as it relates to Windows. The other thing is, is that the terminal pieces that we saw in the last window, right? In, in the more complex version, well, that would be a terminal on Linux, which is probably gonna be Bash. And so you'll probably also learn some shell scripting and you might even do that first before you learn a programming language because operating systems are much more simple and this is where you're gonna be spending most of your time anyway, is hosting and running some flavor version or slice of an operating system. Now, as we continue down the train, Virtual machines and operating systems are kind of one of the primary ways we host applications. The other is through containers. And so it says, learn about containerization as the next step. That makes a lot of sense. But where is Kubernetes in this? Kubernetes is absolutely essential to run production containerization. And while Docker might be one of the vehicles, containers are absolutely managed by Kubernetes at scale. And so Kubernetes probably needs to be inserted here. Now, the rest of this, learning how to manage a repository, maybe even learning how to do one online via GitHub. Absolutely awesome and correct. Choosing AWS as one of your primary kind of cloud provider platforms, you really can't go wrong with AWS. They are the market leader for a reason. And then we've got a provisioner of which there honestly is only one, Terraform. This is the only multi-cloud provisioner other than its clone, OpenTofu, that is in existence. So learning Terraform is an absolute must for any DevOps engineer. Next would be a configuration manager. This could be Ansible, this could be Chef, this could be Puppet, they're all over the previous page. And I would say that Ansible, if you're gonna learn Python, is probably gonna be your perfect tool, plus it's easy to learn, easy to use, and has a lot of active community support. Next is all about CICD. And while we could throw Jenkins in here, we could throw GitLab in here, we could throw a bunch of pieces, GitHub Actions is probably one of the best ways to learn this Unless you know you're going to be working a lot of government contracts, then you probably want to learn Jenkins because honestly, all the build servers like this are very similar to each other. They just have some enhanced features as you get into the edge cases. And then last but not least is Nginx. So Nginx is one of the web servers that was listed on the other page. This is not Tomcat, which is a Java server, basically. It is not Apache web server, which was the predominant web server for most of the 2000s. It's certainly not IIS, which is a Windows-based platform, but notice that this is a Linux path. So notice that we're going down a Linux path for this. But this is a great basic place to start and a great evolution of roadmap.sh. Now, what is missing off of this? Let's go back to some of the things that you might add that are missing. For example, in our simple path, we chose Python. Our operating system here was Linux. And in this case, you probably wanna go for Ubuntu. Don't get me wrong, RHEL is very popular, so is SUSE, but Ubuntu is easy to get access to and is a great place to learn. Terminal knowledge, all of these things apply to terminal knowledge as it relates to Linux. Version control system, yes. GitHub Actions, right? I would say that this is VCS hosting, GitHub right here and GitHub Actions, perfect. Docker as a containerization, great. LXC, I wouldn't even put this on the roadmap, let it go. All of these roles, could be hosted to a certain degree by Nginx, except for probably maybe Firewall. So this option here of choosing Nginx, absolutely on point, but learn how to run Nginx as a forward proxy, a reverse proxy, a caching server, and a load balancer. Next, networking protocols. Figure out how Linux does and interacts with all of these protocols from a network perspective, but this entire email section, forget about this. People do not run their own email servers if they love themselves. So I would recommend that you ignore this completely. Cloud providers, we chose AWS, excellent. Serverless, I would choose Lambda, why? Because you chose AWS and Lambda only runs on AWS, just like Azure Functions only runs on Azure, just like GCP Functions only run on Google Cloud. So if you choose AWS, this is gonna be your serverless platform, learn that. Next, we already chose Ansible in our previous simple choice. So perfect, stick with that. Provisioning, let's go with Terraform. The rest of these are either not cross cloud or they're very complicated. CI CD tools, GitHub Actions, great, let's do that. Log management, 
Well, you're probably gonna wanna learn, honestly, the either Elastic Sack and Loki. I think these are great choices. So let's add that to our simple list from before. Infrastructure monitoring and secrets management. If you're gonna use Kubernetes, which by the way is recommended, then you probably wanna use something like HashiCorp's Vault. There are other options. Let's put that on the back burner for now, but just know what secrets management is because you could also just use AWS for this one. Infrastructure monitoring. If you're gonna use Kubernetes, then stick with Prometheus and Grafana. It's a great combination and it'll serve you well, even if you're not using Kubernetes. What about things like GitOps? Argo CD, probably king in this space. What about artifact management? Well, Artifactory is a great choice. And so I would say that's pretty common. Let's stick with that. Container orchestration. First of all, just to point out, Fargate? No. The rest of this, EKS, AKS, GKE? Well, if you chose Amazon, then you should learn EKS. You might even learn a little ECS. Forget Fargate, you'll learn about that through learning these other two. Docker Swarm? No. Kubernetes? Absolutely. Add that to the list. As far as application monitoring, I would probably learn Jaeger, but honestly, you already have this covered with Prometheus from up here from before, so you probably should be okay. What about advanced concepts like service mesh? Honestly, just stick with Istio. You'll probably be pretty good. And then maybe learn a few cloud design patterns at the very end, and that's it. Now, there are very specific roadmaps if you want a deeper dive into Linux or Kubernetes or Docker, but that should give you a pretty rough idea if we were to rehash it of your choices. So if we go back to the beginning, which again, I'm not necessarily recommending that you learn a programming language right off the bat, I probably would start with an operating system, start with Linux, go to Ubuntu, mess with the terminal, touch the bash shell, learn Vim, forget Nano and Emacs, and then learn how to do all these things inside the Linux operating system. Maybe do a little Git because that's actually a good thing to add into your knowledge because that's gonna be on the, co the command line anyway. Then after you've done a little bit of bash, go back and learn Python specifically. That's just gonna be great for beginners. Then come down here and figure out how GitHub works. Maybe host your own repo. Then play a little bit with Docker and learn how that works. And then set up your own Nginx server, even better, set up inside a Docker. Then do a forward proxy, reverse proxy, caching server, load balancer. And maybe while you're here, turn on a firewall for Linux of which it has at least one, if not five. Next, come down here and play with Linux as it relates to SFTP, HTTPS, TLS, SSH in particular, and DNS. You at least wanna know how this works, but SSH is your biggest friend here. And you've already got Nginx cover from before. Ignore email, spend some time doing AWS, which means you're gonna play with Lambda, which also means you're gonna play with EKS later. Use Ansible as your configuration management tool. Use Terraform as your provisioner. Play with GitHub Actions for CI, CD. Maybe learn a little bit of Loki, Elastic, Prometheus, and Grafana. That covers all of your infrastructure monitoring. Play with Artifactory last. Play with Argo CD last. Play with Kubernetes definitely last. And then learn Istio very, very last. And then maybe play with some cloud design patterns. Hopefully that was helpful. That's exactly what you need to get started. And honestly, if you master that list of probably about two dozen things, you will have an excellent and stellar career when it comes to technology inside of DevOps. So to rehash, we just went through roadmap.sh and saw the complex roadmap and the simple roadmap, and we created a hybrid that allowed us to delineate exactly what a beginner can learn today in 2025 to become a competent DevOps engineer. Now, there's one caveat. You wanna be figuring out how to fold AI into each of these workflows. How do you use it to write Terraform files? How do you use AI to help you with your Ansible playbooks? What can AI help you when it comes to troubleshooting Linux, Kubernetes, and all of the other services that we just talked about? So remember, this is a Linux specific beginner's path for DevOps mastery. So I'm Michael Forster. If you like this DevOps exploration, leave a comment in the comments below hit that like and subscribe button and let us know what you would like a tutorial or a deep dive on. And who knows, maybe you'll see it in the Code Cloud catalog for 2025. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.